All right, welcome to lesson six, folks, where we look at evolution without natural selection. This is a concept that we will discuss very briefly, simply because it is important and it does connect to some of the aspects with natural selection. Um, but it is kind of important to look at it in the context of uh, the impact that human beings have on natural selection as a whole. And I think it will allow for greater scope and greater depth in conversation and, and talking about and researching uh, for your research essays and articles as you move through that process. So I think it's an important lesson to, to connect to those two things, but I'm not going to spend too, too much time talking on it. So uh, looking at adaptive traits, uh, they are favored in a given environment, which allows for that increase in fitness. But it's not always because of evolutionary changes in populations. It's, it's not necessarily always based on traits. And there are several factors that we're going to talk about here that contribute to essentially evolution without natural selection. And that first one is genetic drift. Uh, genetic drift allows for allele frequency uh, changes in a population, and it only applies to a small population. So it's it's very tiny population, so it's kind of hard to scale it up in terms of that natural selection aspects. It's caused by random events that are not predictable by any principle that natural selection has at its disposal. And those changes in allele frequencies will also change the phenotype ratios observed in a population. So when we look at some examples, one aspect of genetic drift that we can think of is if we have a population of insects, in this case beetles, where two-thirds of them are brown and one-third of them are green, and by accident, or not accident, or what have you, um, as someone steps on two of the green bugs. This completely changes the population ratio, and we call that genetic drift. So we go from a one-third green, two-thirds brown, to a one-seventh green, six-sevenths brown, and that final population tally as a result of that impact or that incident is what we call genetic drift. Another example with regards to genetic drift looks at the change in allele frequencies of a small population. It's one really good way for you to remember that. So if we were to take a small population uh, of shapes that are equally distributed and we change that population for whatever means, we will now have a new allele frequency that happens as a result. And when you think about animal husbandry and specifically agricultural uh, processes, that is a component of genetic drift that we will kind of talk about a little bit. And those of you that are researching how human beings impact evolution, specifically with regards to agriculture and, and other species that live on this planet, this is definitely one of those concepts that you're going to be talking about. So another one that we can talk about here is genetic bottlenecking. And that genetic bottlenecking sees a dramatic decrease in population size as a result. Uh, and that leads to genetic drift. So examples are mass extinctions. And when we look at cheetah, uh, it's interesting to think about 12,000 years ago, approximately only eight cheetah survived a mass extinction event um, you know, 12,000 years ago. So those eight cheetah, whatever their traits were, that's what ended up being propagated. So the remaining gene pools of those cheetahs, it represents a much smaller gene pool and because there are fewer individuals to reproduce. So when you look at cheetahs as a species and as a population as a whole, there's only about 0.1% difference in DNA, and, and they're very susceptible to diseases as a result of that. So it's an interesting concept to think of in terms of some species that, that did survive in small, small, small numbers, any mass extinction event over the course of history, uh, that gene pool will represent a very closely knit genetic connection. And in the case of cheetahs, that 0.1% difference, and, and that allows them to be very susceptible to disease because they do not have that diversity within their genetic gene pool. Uh, the example here that I have to, to kind of show you that bottlenecking is that imagine we have a population that's 50-50 split, yellow and blue, and bottlenecking occurs where, you know, X amount fall out of the bottle through that bottleneck, for lack of a better example or better term. The leftover population in the bottle are killed off. Whatever ratio that came out of that bottle, those survive, surviving individuals, they reproduce, they pass on their alleles, and then that next generation will show the allele frequency of that, uh, the surviving individuals or those bottleneck individuals. And that's in the case of the cheetahs, this is what happened. Another one that we look at is called the founder effect. And we kind of looked at it a little bit with regards to 
uh, any of the, the species that lived on the Galapagos Island when Darwin first made his trip. That small number of existing individuals move from one existing population and they live in a new location. And the ancestral or original population might have an allele frequency, allele frequency or allele traits that don't match the new colony and the new population. So when you think about that small group that moves to an island, if the small group happened to all be red in this example with these ladybugs or these beetles, the new colony population, that allele frequency of that new population on the island, it will be drastically different than their ancestral or their original population. So evolution occurs, change in allele frequency based on individuals who move to a new location. So this founder effect is a form of evolution without natural selection. And then the last one that I wanna talk about here with you all today is the Hardy-Weinberg principle. Uh, for those of you who are clever enough to see this, it is a perfect square trinomial. Those of you who remember your 11U math, I know it's been probably a long time for some of you, uh, but that is a perfect square trinomial. The idea here is that the allele frequency in a large population will always remain relatively constant. And this assumes that no evolution is happening. Now, this equation is very interesting because it looks at the allele frequency within a population. And, and if those frequencies remain constant, there's no evolution occurring. So this equation can be used in population dynamics and, and the study of, of genetic drift and evolution as a whole to determine just how much allele change is going on within a population. So that one represents that 100% of the population. The Q represents the frequency of a recessive allele. P represents the frequency of dominant allele. And that middle term is just kind of helping out with regards to that balance. So this key component of the Hardy-Weinberg principle with regards to genetic drift is that it assumes that no evolution occurs. It does not believe in the concept, and I don't want to say believe because that's not really true, but it doesn't subscribe to the concept that evolution is going on within that population to see that allele frequency change. Because within that equation, within that population, the allele frequencies in the equation stay the same. So it assumes that there's gonna be no selection, no mutation, no migration. Uh, it has to be a large population. It has to be random mating. And as we move through this unit and we move through other units, you will kind of see the importance of the Hardy-Weinberg equ equilibrium equation uh, but other than me just talking about it briefly here, it's not really necessary for you to really understand and follow. All right, that's it for today, folks. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm going to be posting another check-in in, in the next couple of days with regards to your research articles. Not many of you have reached out to me with regards to questions about it. Um, I'm going to take a look back at the data that I collected to see if I need to reach out to anyone over the coming days before I post that new check-in. Uh, but otherwise, stay safe and enjoy your day. Here we go.